Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Take a look at your screen. Border Patrol estimating more than 2,400 people still waiting to be processed overnight. This is Eagle Pass. The border town has seen a huge spike in the number of people crossing over the border. You can see massive crowds gathering there throughout the last 24 hours. There's so many people there. Border Patrol says they had to bring in more resources. It's why they shut down the International Railway earlier this week. Representative Tony Gonzalez is expected to hold a press conference in Eagle Pass to provide an update later in the hour. We'll bring you that live when it happens. And back here at home, taking a live look out of the Alamo City 67. It is kind of cloudy out there. Yesterday was beautiful, Sarah Spivey. Are we going to see rain anytime soon? We are, Max, as early as tomorrow morning in the form of drizzle. Now, I want to show you this morning's time lapse. So before sunrise, the fog really had not taken over in San Antonio. This is a look at 645. But shortly after sunrise, watch what happens. Boom, fog moves in and it stuck around for a few hours before eventually clearing and by about 10 o'clock this morning. And we've had uh, times of sun here with some clouds replacing the sunshine as we speak. Take a look at the uh, clouds and temperatures. So there's been clear skies to the south, but as you can see, the clouds are starting to build. We've got an influx of moisture in the air. You can actually kind of feel it outside. It doesn't feel as nice and dry as it has in the last few days where we've had a little bit more sun in Pleasanton Gonzalez. It's in the 70s where it's stayed cloudy like out near Del Rio Rock Springs and Kerrville. Temperatures are in the low 60s. We're right in the middle of that here in San Antonio. For the rest of the day here in San Antonio, we'll be looking at a high right around 72 with mostly cloudy conditions. After sunset, it will become cloudy and even by midnight, we could see some areas of patchy drizzle. Now that patchy drizzle will definitely be here by tomorrow morning and this starts a trend of daily morning fog fog and drizzle throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend. We'll also have a few passing showers mixing through there uh, as well on as on Sunday as well. So I will have a look at the updated Christmas forecast. It's looking a little drier on Christmas Day itself and slightly cooler too. those details coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Important to traffic alert to tell you about a lot of folks getting ready to hit the road for the holiday season, but there is a major closure on I-10 eastbound heading to Seguin. You can see the traffic map showing a backup on the screen right now. All the eastbound lanes are closed for repairs. That means anyone going east, like those heading to Houston for the holiday, should use the FM 2538 exit and travel the frontage road past the work zone. You can get back onto I-10 at Santa Clara Road, TxDOT expects this area will be closed all day. Well, a decorated San Antonio SWAT officer now accused of engaging in a sexual relationship with another officer while on duty. But discipline records obtained by KSAT Investigates show Officer Jonathan Reyes only got a five-day suspension. The other officer wasn't disciplined at all. Our records show the officers were involved in a months-long affair. SAPD Chief Will McManus says this was not a case of him going light on discipline or taking steps to protect the city's image. The divorce and the personal issues that uh, Officer Reyes was involved in is an entirely separate issue. But unfortunately, that, that issue clouds what the allegation was. You know, people will make judgment not only on the allegation, but make a connection to the, to the, to the off-duty uh, incident that was taking place. So coming up at six o'clock, the explosive allegations beneath the surface of the SAPD discipline case. What started with a call about a car crash has San Antonio police on a whole different path now. They say bullets and not a car are what killed a man who was found alongside Highway 151 overnight. Katrina Weber has that story from public safety headquarters where detectives are still sorting it all out. It originally looked like this death investigation was headed for one department here, the traffic division, but it ended up in another with homicide investigators. And that was all because of what paramedics discovered as they tried to save this man. Police say that EMS workers noticed he had bullet holes in his back as they tried to perform CPR. They originally thought he might have been hit by a car when they found him on the access road of Highway 151 near Callahan Road. Police now are calling this a murder case. They say the original call around 1.30 this morning was in response to an alert from the victim's cell phone. 
Police say when his phone fell to the ground, a feature on it automatically sent out a message that there had been a car crash. Well, as police found out, that was not the case, but the phone still is what called their attention to the victim. So far, police have not found the shooter. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, big update to a story we first told you about yesterday. A man now charged with murder after shooting his nephew yesterday morning during an argument. So on your screen right now, 59-year-old Barry Moore, the man who was arrested. Now, this shooting happened in the backyard of a home on Laven Drive. It's in a neighborhood near Calabria Road. According to police, Moore's 43-year-old nephew, Keon Johnson, was found dead, shot in the torso. This after investigators examined the crime scene, finished their questioning. They then determined they had enough evidence to arrest and charge Moore with murder. Teens and crime is a trending headline recently in Bear County. About half a dozen crime headlines in the past three weeks have involved teenagers. The Bear County Juvenile Probation Department says the Department of Youth involved in repeat crimes is rare. However, probation officers are stepping up the monitoring and supervision of teens they consider to be high risk. Those are teens that have a difficult home life, are runaways not involved in extracurricular activities, and are involved in drugs. Chief Probation Officer Jill Mata says the majority of the kids that enter the system are able to get the help they need to avoid future criminal problems, but there will be severe punishment for those who don't. There are always going to be a group of kids that are committing these offenses that are really horrible. And we know those children have to be removed from the community and there have to be consequences for that behavior. And they're pretty um, strong consequences that are needed in those cases. According to department data, the number of violent referrals between January and October went up 12 percent when compared to the same time frame in 2022. Nonviolent crime referrals went up more than 34 percent. Gun, drug and vehicle theft saw the most increases. Misdemeanor youth crimes went up nearly 13 percent. All right, a big night for not only UTSA, but the city of San Antonio. A lot of obstacles. A lot of changes, a lot of surprises, but UTSA getting their first ever bowl win. We're going to explain what happened, why, and what comes next. Brooks Manufacturing Companies are adding more jobs to the area. We take you to the production floor of a solar panel manufacturer that is expanding and tell you what other opportunities are coming soon. Good afternoon and welcome back. When choosing where to build a facility, location is key for manufacturers shipping out products. And some international companies, they are choosing Brooks on the southeast side of San Antonio to set up their shops. It's latest addition, a supplier to Tesla, and Brooks officials say more job opportunities are on the way. This community is filled with military history and culture. When driving by, you can't help but notice the construction crews around. Brooks has been attracting different businesses, including manufacturing companies. We visited a solar panel manufacturer that's been here for a few years. After putting on safety gear, we took a tour of Mission Solar Energy, located near Research Plaza and South New Braunfels Avenue. Initially, we came to San Antonio because we had a development agreement with this, uh, CPS Energy, and we built uh, close to 500 megawatts of solar for CPS Energy. And as part of that agreement, uh, we actually decided to set up our solar panel manufacturing here. The production floor is busy. Employees work with automated machines, inspecting every panel. The front end is where we actually have our strings, uh, where we actually laminate and perform all the other processes. Right here at the back is where we actually now test it, apply the J-Box, which is pretty much the connectors for a solar module and then we actually apply it to a bin. Sam Martins, president of Mission Solar Energy, says Brooks is a great location to transport panels easily to different places. We're very centrally located, and so you know our customers are all across the United States. To be able to ship out from a central location uh, is obviously a big advantage for us. And this company is not slowing down anytime soon. We're in the process of building a new warehouse to almost double our square footage here at Brooks. Mission Solar Energy has been in Brooks for about 10 years. They have about 110 employees, and with this new expansion, more jobs are on the way. Other companies are also bringing more opportunities. Brooks officials tell us the
the latest manufacturer opening a facility is Sim One and a corporation. The South Korean company that's coming to Brooks that's a supplier to Tesla, they are well underway with their construction. We hope to see them opening their doors within the next uh, year. Chief Strategy Officer for Brooks, Connie Gonzalez, shows us the other companies already here. We have the uh, 350,000 square foot facility where Amazon uh, currently is at. We have Cuisine Solutions, the French-based company, um, Nisei Plastics, which is that Japanese company. With many acres still available at Brooks, some already working here are excited for the future. And we were one of the pioneers here at Brooks. <laughs> so it is uh, good to have other companies around. It does develop the Brooks city area. And we love to see the growth and the job opportunities. And every time you drive by Brooks, you see new development, which is exciting. It is exciting. Also exciting, the weather we've had over the past few days. So, so Sarah Bobby, you're going to let us know how it's all going to change. I am. Well, let's start with the aquifer. Okay, the aquifer is down a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. And this is some not so good news. Mountain Cedar is even higher than it was yesterday, past 4,000. Molds are low at 280. Now, the one thing that may help to wash out some of the Mountain Cedar are the rain chances in the coming days. This is just a look at the daily chances for showers and storms. Morning drizzle, it's going to happen every morning until Christmas Eve. And then we get a front. I'll tell you what that front means for our Christmas Day forecast coming up. Good afternoon. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. So yesterday, seemingly picture perfect. Did you make it out and about? Yeah, a little bit, but... Change is on the way. Change is on the way, Sarah Spivey. Yep. What's that David Bowie song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are going to be seeing some changes. Let's start with the first one. We are going to have morning fog and drizzle throughout the rest of this week and into the weekend. In the mix there, we'll have a few on and off showers uh, through the days until Sunday. And it is on Sunday afternoon that I expect a cool front to move through. So that means a Christmas forecast update. So let's get down to business and talk about today's clouds and temperatures. It's been an interesting day. You know, we started off with complete fog. Then we saw quite a bit of sunshine for parts of uh, the south central Texas region, east and south of San Antonio. That's why temperatures there are about five degrees warmer in Pleasanton and Gonzales. It's in the low 70s. Meanwhile, it's been totally cloudy across parts of the hill country and out west toward Del Rio 62. So cooler than in San Antonio. We'll go ahead and zoom in and take a look at some of these temperatures. As you can see, though, clouds are building back in and we're going to see mostly cloudy to completely cloudy skies throughout uh, the rest of the week and into the weekend. It's 64 in Bulverde, 66 in a Lotus and 69 down at Stinson. So for the rest of your day today, 72 degrees this afternoon, mostly cloudy. This evening is going to be very mild. Temperatures are only going to cool into the low 60s. In fact, I expect at least some patchy drizzle to start start by midnight here in San Antonio and that'll carry into your Thursday as well. Here's a look at the future cast fog and drizzle. This is tonight at midnight into Thursday morning. You can see that fog will become even more widespread than it was this morning and we'll have areas of drizzle too. You know, this morning we didn't really have the mist and drizzle, uh, but tomorrow morning we will and that will be the case throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend, morning fog and drizzle. As we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, you know, we're about to enter into a busy travel period here. We've got a high pressure system off to our east. That's why we've been able to see the Gulf moisture increase, and you know it when you step outside. It feels a little bit more humid outside. It's all because of our winds picking up from the southeast here. As we take a look to the west, we're going to focus now on our chance for rain in addition to the morning drizzle drizzle and fog. Uh, there's an upper level low bringing a lot of rainfall to parts of California. This has got energy and moisture with it. As it moves closer to Texas and to San Antonio, our rain chances during the day are going to go up. Now this represents passing light to moderate rain showers, about 30% coverage tomorrow, 40% coverage on Friday, 30% on Saturday and 40% on Sunday. This is just the shower activity. 
morning drizzle is a 100% chance of that happening every single day from Thursday through Sunday until we get that front moving through on Sunday, which is Christmas Eve, and that'll set up a pretty nice Christmas day. So here's your Christmas forecast for you. A few morning uh, showers and even a few storms possible early on Christmas Eve, Sunday morning, as that front approaches, we'll still get up into the 70s. And once that front moves through, it'll be nice and cool on Christmas morning in the low 50s, even in the upper 40s across parts of the hill country. And we'll have low humidity on Christmas Day and a high in the 60s rather than in the 70s. So pretty nice Christmas Day forecast with low humidity and a few degrees cooler than what we initially thought as we were looking toward that forecast. Uh, coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking about travel trouble spots across the nation as tomorrow really does start a big travel uh, stretch here. And speaking of a stretch of weather, we're going to be getting the morning fog and morning drizzle throughout uh, the rest of the week and into the weekend as well. A chance for showers and storms. We'll also talk about the potential rainfall coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Thank you Sarah. All right. How about them road runners? Look at this, even with a, for us at least, a surprise quarterback start. <sighs> road runners looked fantastic. We're gonna break it down. What led to their first ever bowl win? And from a win to a loss. Spurs not looking too hot. Wemby sitting out because of ankle soreness. We're gonna explain what happened, why, and what comes next. All right, welcome back. The UTSA Roadrunners, officially bowl champs. KSAT 12's Mary Rominger was there, seeing all the plays and all the excitement unfold. Hey guys, the emotions on the UTSA sideline as the game clock winded down certainly reflected how much this historic bowl game win meant to the Roadrunners. Happy with the way the guys play, man, and I'm just glad we was able to go get our first bowl win, man. I feel like, you know, this just kind of, as the cherry on top. I mean, I feel like we're legendary. This is something that can't be re rewritten. They won two conference championships. They won a bowl. They were all also eligible. They were also uh, all here tonight. I mean, that's just, people don't understand what that does for a program. For anything nowadays, for somebody to finish what they started, doesn't happen very much. No regrets at all. You know, God has everything for a reason. Even we don't understand the reason at the time. So, uh, you know, coming back, I didn't think the season would go like that, of course. I didn't know spring would go like that. Uh, I didn't know I wouldn't be able to play in a bowl game that I wanted to come back to play in. But God has everything for a reason. He has something special in store for me, and I'm just following his lead, and uh, I'm just excited to find me a bowl champion. The game, of course, didn't look like we expected with quarterback Frank Harris out with a shoulder sprain, senior safety Rashad Wisdom leaving with a broken arm, but it was one for the record books. In Frisco, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mary, and huge shout out to Owen McCown. All right, a final look at the score, 35-17 Roadrunners. We're going to have much more on the Frisco Bowl tonight, on the News at 5, and of course, on KSAT.com. All right, from all smiles for the Roadrunners to frustration and confusion. The Spurs tipping off their road trip in Milwaukee without Wemby, because remember, he had ankle soreness. So Zach Collins got the start at center, and the first quarter, Collins started off the scoring. 14-footer, 2-0 Spurs lead. And after that, well, the Bucks took over. Damian Lillard making history last night. Layup becoming the 51st person in the NBA to score 20,000 points. That made it 13-3 Bucks. Less than a minute left in the quarter. Dame, well, who's at it again? That's three more. Dribble, and the triple is good. The Bucks would lead 44-24. They're up 44-26 after one, 72-59 at halftime. So let's go to the third quarter. Early third, the Spurs, they're trying to mount a comeback against the second best team on paper in the East. Jeremy Sohan down low, passing the ball to Collins for three, and it's good. Spurs down 10, 74-64. Moments later, Spurs ball, Sohan drives in, gets denied, but Tell the Johnson was there cleaning up. Spurs within 8.74-66. The Bucks restore order behind, well, you guessed it, Dame from three, nothing but net. Bucks go up by 17. The Spurs make it closer in garbage time, but they lose 132 to 119. Damian Lillard, 40 points. Keldon Johnson leading the Spurs with 28. All right, so we got a long road ahead of us. The Spurs making a trip to Chi-Town. 
taking on the Bulls and DeMar DeRozan tomorrow night. They are going to continue on their three-game road trip. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Okay, you want to talk about making a play when you need one? Well, look no further than the Texas tight end, Dalton Schultz. Amazing catch. Wait for it. Oh, my goodness. Come on. I mean, that happened just four minutes left in the game against the Tennessee Titans this past Sunday. Schultz literally ripping the ball away from the Titans corner. Roger McCreary setting up the game-tying touchdown, which led to the Texans' overtime. And, of course, head coach D'Amico Ryans shared how important Dalton Schultz has been to this squad throughout the season. You know, when you have a tight end who can, you know, really – threat in the middle of the field, right? And when you talk about coverage on mismatch coverage on linebackers or safeties, having Dalton, right, with his ability to work the middle of the field is huge for us. And no play bigger than the one, right, he took away from their defender there. I don't know if that's an interception or reception, but it was a great play by Dalton right there. A big time play of him being aggressive at the catch point. So it was good to have him back and him seeing him make those plays for us. All right, so next up. Texans hosting the Cleveland Browns Christmas Eve at noon, and it is being reported that quarterback C.J. Stroud, QB1, remains in concussion protocol. He likely will miss the game, but big fan of Dalton Schultz. He's on my fantasy team. We're in the championship, so Dalton, we need you to step up this weekend. <laughs> yes, and just going back to UTSA, congratulations. Huge congratulations. I was waiting for that coffee celebration, though. I know. We saw enough of it. Don't worry. If you want to watch it, KSAT.com. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> 